Hello, hello. I'm Cynthia Allen. I get the privilege today to making an introduction uh, for you, but a couple introductions for you. So uh, let me just get started, though, with the very basics of what you need to know, which is um, this is not part of the summit officially. It's like a summit warm up. I kind of like getting a little warm up for you. So whether you're coming to the summit or not, you are very welcome. If you think to yourself, what are they talking about with the summit? It's the Move Better, Feel Better Summit. And you need to get registered because it starts September 15th and it's going to be a phenomenal event. We are at uh, 25,000 people registered so far. And why would you not want to be part of a incredible movement event. It's occurring all over the world for 10 days. Grab it, it's free, and enjoy it. Uh, Katrina is here in the background with us, and she is going to be helping you with anything that you need in terms of technically. Uh, so I'm just going to spotlight her here real quick. There she is. Katrina, you want to wave? Yay, Katrina. So she's going to help you out. And then um, let's see here. Let me get rid of that spotlight so she doesn't feel like I've just got her on there no matter what. And then I am wearing, I am wearing the, the summit, some of the summit swag here. This is uh, one of the available t-shirts, mugs, journal, shower curtain. <laughs> clock. You can get it a million different ways from our Red Bubble store, from our Red Bubble store. So uh, Katrina is going to put that link in the chat for you a few different times. All profits from this, all profits go to Pro Kids, a wonderful nonprofit helping children that have entered into basically some kind of uh, state care system and need need an extra hand to make it through and be healthy into adulthood. And yes, it's going to be recorded for later. Absolutely. And there's also other designs like I climbed the Move Better, Feel Better Summit. So you might want to uh, get that one as well. You can get all kinds of different designs are fun. Caps, pins, sticky pads, magnets, things, things. Anyway, they're just fun things. Um, well, with a great deal of pleasure today, I am going to be introducing you to someone who's become more and more near and dear to my heart over these last few years. Uh, yes, and um, it is Brian Shercliffe. So I'm going to tell you some things about Brian. Brian can blush if he wants to blush while I'm talking about him. He, he's, he's good at blushing. <laughs> so... Brian, um, Brian uh, came into my life about uh, almost 10 years ago now. It's, it's almost 10 years ago now. And I had, Brian and I had been hearing about each other for a long time. And I know some of you've heard the story, but many of you will not have heard it. So he might tell you about that story. And I had been hearing about Brian from one of our mutual friends, Penny Castilla. And Penny was like, you've got to know what Brian is doing because this was pre-pandemic. So everything was about what was happening locally. So right here in our town of Cincinnati, she would tell me that I needed to know about what Brian was doing. And really, Brian and I are extremely busy people. So learning about what everybody else is doing is something that tends to get pushed on the back burner. Uh, but Brian did come and meet me and uh, one day, and then it just started to snowball since then. Before he ever snowed, showed up in my uh, snow dump. It was a snowy day, actually. It was a snowy day. <laughs> That's funny, we had to cancel. Before Brian ever showed up, he was already big in movement and in healing. I mean, he has taught religion. I would call, I would call him a Hebrew scholar. Maybe other people would not, but I would call him a Hebrew scholar with his own translations uh, for some of the books of the Old Testament of the Pentateuch, I think is what it's called, maybe. I hope I got that right. And then um, also uh, he taught golf, swimming. He did Tai Chi for a lot of years, a lot of depth study of Tai Chi healing touch. He's a, a quite accomplished yoga instructor. 
And then he discovered the world of Bones for Life and even Feldenkrais. So uh, today I'm gonna turn your uh, movement experience over to both you and Brian, because you'll create it together for him to share something just phenomenal out of uh, Bones for Life. So I'll take myself off here, Brian, and let you, let you go for it. And I'd been hearing about Cynthia for a good decade before I'd heard from Penny Castilla because my mom was a student of Cynthia's for a very long time. And uh, I have to admit that I thought the stuff that she was doing was silly, that how could that be helpful? I used to think handstands would save the world. And uh, back in my hardcore days, and uh, but when I first went to uh, Bones for Life with Cynthia, in five minutes, I was pain free. I'd walked in with some pain that day. Five minutes into it, I was pain free. I couldn't believe it. So I'm a big fan of Bones for Life, big fan of Feldenkrais, big fan of Bones for Life. And this year with the summit, I'll be presenting in the or be a panelist with the great outdoors. And my favorite thing with the great outdoors is walking. Something as simple as just walking through my neighborhood and talking to people, seeing dogs, watching the flowers grow, watching things change. And Bones for Life is all about helping us to improve our walking. So what I'd like to invite you to do is to begin to set up a space that we can use. And then I'll invite us to walk a little bit for after that. So the, the things that we need, maybe you saw in the email that we need a few things for this particular process. One thing is a like a long bath towel would be very helpful. All right, so if you don't have that, you might go run and find one real quick. If you don't have a bath towel, a long sheet could work too. Or if you're a Bones for, Night, Bones for Life aficionado, if you have a wrap, you can use your wrap. You also need like a softer surface to lie on the ground. It could be a bed. I think you get better results on a floor. So you see that I have my old yoga mat laid out here. Let me spotlight myself so this will be easier to see. There we go. And you want that mat to be into the wall so that we're going to be using that wall as part of the process. So all we're going to do is take this bath, this uh, bath towel and roll it up so that you have created this long roller this long roller and we'll place it first down the middle of the, of the mat with the end of it touching the wall or at least very close to the wall and kind of smooth it out just a little bit to see if it's, make sure it's not too coily, I would say. It doesn't have to be too fussy. So this is a process that needs to be done, uh, can't be done in a chair. So if you're looking for some uh, experiences in a chair, there's gonna be a wonderful series during the summit uh, taught by Emma Alter that'll be seated in a chair. But this is a process that we'll need to do either on the floor or a bed and the bed would need to be like with a headboard, a flat headboard um, or the wall itself. The floor would be better if you can do work with the floor. And it could be helpful also to have like a small like a hand towel nearby that you can use for underneath your head or like a folded t-shirt is what I often use uh, to have that in your handy as well. So give everybody just a minute to start to set up your space if you haven't already. The people that I can see immediately looks good. Wonderful. And just to, just to reiterate the importance of really taking care of yourself during this process, doing only what's easy. The movements are meant to be gentle, um, meant to inspire curiosity, a wonder about yourself. And so the only way we can do that is if we're, if we're gentle with ourselves. So if I offer something that doesn't feel so helpful for you, then you can decide to, um, eventually you'll be lying on this roller. So rolling off the roller gently and just resting on the floor um, or even getting up and walking around, just doing something that helps you to take care of yourself. Maybe you'd like to return to the process and even just begin to imagine it. And you'll get some amazing results just using your imagination with any of these processes. Um, even if you decide to sit in a chair and imagine the entire process, I think you'll find some interesting things happening. 
So what I'd like to invite you to do in just a moment, oh, let me ask this real quick too. Are there, are there any um, Bones for Life grads here, people that have been part of the Bones for Life program that wouldn't mind being, um, that I could spotlight you? I see, if you could raise your virtual hand, I'll find you more easily. Oh, good, now I see you all, friends. I saw a couple of you when you first came in, and then the screen always changes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few spotlights here. So nice to see you all. Oh, I saw one more. Okay, great. So what I'd like to invite everyone to do is to just begin to stand up and begin to walk around a little bit, just through your place. And just begin to notice what walking feels like for you today. Bring your attention, your curiosity to yourself as you walk. For instance, maybe you listen to how one foot touches the floor as you're walking. And maybe the other foot becomes interesting too. And as each foot touches the floor, can you get a sense of what your spine does as you walk? It's really quite incredible. Good. And after you have just a little sense of your walking, I invite you to begin to find your way to the floor as easily as possible and begin to lie down on this roller so it's down the middle of your spine. So your head's gonna be on the roller, it's gonna be between your shoulder blades, it's gonna be down the middle of your back, your low back, down, past on your sacrum, on, maybe even on your tailbone, and keep your feet in standing, please. And you also wanna be close enough that your head is very close to the wall. Like maybe just your hand could slide between your head and the wall. And just notice for a second, your feet in standing, just to describe that again too, Cynthia reminded us last week, the feet in standing just means your knees are bent and your feet are on the floor. And if you have shoes on, you might be happier with shoes off. And just begin to notice for a second how this roller, this towel, or whatever it is you're choosing to use, what's it doing with these curves of your spine? Each curve's a little filled in now, isn't it? It's getting support. So maybe as you take just a couple cleansing breaths for a second, you might begin to notice that these curves are being supported by this roller. And then begin to notice where your hands are. And can you begin to, wherever your hands are, begin to slide them eventually up onto your belly. And then slide them back down and see if you can really allow your hands to be soft and kind of take the shape of whatever your hands touch, whether it's the floor, or your hips or your belly. And each time, see if there's some way that you can kind of reduce the effort, make this even simpler, easier. Can your hands eventually start to come maybe a little further, like along your fingertips, begin to brush along your breastbone and maybe your fingers begin to come up to your chin as if you're about to feed yourself something. 
And if it's all right for you, you can even allow your hands to touch your face and slide over your face as if you're gonna comb your hair. And then the next time your hands slide over your belly, over your torso, over your breastbone, over your face, can you begin to place your hands on the wall so that your palms are on the wall and your fingers are pointing down to the ground. Your fingertips would be above the baseboard if you have a baseboard or where the baseboard would be. And if it's not so comfortable, you could try fists into the wall. And if it's not so comfortable, you could also decide that just to, to not place your hands on the wall, just have your hands down maybe on the ground next to your hips. And let's just see what happens when you start to let your, kind of imagine that your nose, your breastbone and your pelvis are gonna move together and you're just barely gonna roll to the right and then barely roll to the left. So kind of a unified roll in a sense, right? Good, so your nose, your breastbone, and your pelvis all move together, move as one. Very nice, and then come back to the middle and let it go and slide your hands down and just take a little pause, keep your feet in standing. See what it's like to take a cleansing breath. And slide your hands back over your body to the wall. That's right for you. And let's see if we do something different this time. How about this time that your pelvis goes, let's say to the right, but your nose goes to the left. And it's just a small movement. And then you come back through the middle and then your pelvis goes in the other direction. Your nose goes in the other direction. So your nose goes to the left, your pelvis goes to the right. Nose goes to the right, your pelvis goes to the left. So two different possibilities that we're exploring here so far, right? One where everything goes together and one where you're, in a sense, your top half goes in one direction, your lower half goes in the other direction. But could there be a third possibility? Could there be a third possibility? So what I invite you to do is begin to slide your, to come back to the middle, slide your hands back down, and then very, very slowly, easily begin to roll to one side so that you can brush that roller out from underneath you. So that it's just you and the floor again, or for the first time, at least in this process. And just notice how you meet the floor now. Maybe it feels good to keep your feet in standing or maybe you like to let your legs be long. And just appreciate what that roller was doing for you, right? It was supporting those curves in an interesting way. And what's it like to breathe here? And then when you're ready, slide one foot into standing, the other foot into standing, so both knees are bent again, and begin to roll to a side. And bring yourself up to seated. And so that you can position this roller this time down the right side of your mat, so that the right side of your body is going to be on this roller. And now it's going to be parallel. <clears throat> to your spine parallel to where it was before so that the inside of your right shoulder blade and kind of the dimple of your right hip, backside hip, will be on this roller. And your head, this time your head will not be on the roller. This time your head will not be on the roller. So brush that out of the way. Or if it really is annoying, you can uh, situated so that the roller is just underneath your shoulder and not really touching your head at all, not even to the side of your head. 
and maybe keep your feet in standing. And now you really have to be to notice that your feet are on the ground. So if that roller is underneath the foot, just kind of brush that roller out of the way with your foot so that both feet can be touching the ground for sure. And begin to appreciate this is a rather strange, rather strange way of resting, isn't it? See what it's like to take a cleansing breath. Maybe some places it's easier, maybe some places it's more challenging within yourself. And when you're ready, begin to slide your hands back over your body to the wall. So your palms are on the wall, your fingertips are pointing down toward the ground, or your fists are on the wall. And can you begin to press, let's say, through your left foot just barely enough that the left side of your pelvis comes up to be level with the right side of your pelvis. And then begin to lower your pelvis back down. You let go of the press of that foot. And you can do this a number of times. So that you press through that left foot so the left side of your pelvis comes up to be level with the right side that stays on the roller. And then you begin to lower down. And start to notice, can you make this move with your knees being pretty still left and right? So these kind of stay in the center. They're allowed to move the slightest bit. So then it becomes kind of a different movement, doesn't it? And is there some way that you can make this simpler, easier, clearer, smoother perhaps? Maybe even you slow it down to really feel what happens when you press through this left foot and the left side of your pelvis comes up to be level with the right side on the roller. Rather interesting through these ribs, isn't it? Good. Very good. And begin to let it go. Let your left side of your pelvis rest on the floor. Slide your hands down. Take a nice rest. You're welcome to keep your feet in standing or if it feels good to slide your legs long, you're welcome to do that too. You always do what's most comfortable for you. Always in Bones for Life and always in Feldenkrais, Christ, these somatic explorations that really help us to just opportunities to begin to sense ourselves in different ways, to know ourselves in these rich ways that we can through movement. And then begin to, if, you, if you've let your legs go long, slide one foot into standing, the other foot into standing, so both feet are on the floor again, both knees are bent. Slide your hands over your body to the wall. And is there some way to begin to free your left shoulder blade from the ground? Is there some way that you could begin to just barely, as if a piece of paper were underneath your left shoulder blade and it could be freed from the ground the slightest bit and then you lower down? A little more challenging than your left hip, yeah? So maybe make the movement even smaller. Maybe, maybe your shoulder blade doesn't even leave the ground. Very good. And after you've explored that, begin to let it go. Slide your hands down. Just give your hands and arms a rest. Maybe keep your feet in standing unless you need to let your legs go long for a second. It's movement and rest, movement and rest. And then begin to slide your feet into standing one at a time, slide your hands over your body to the wall. And can you begin to press through your left foot so the left side of your pelvis comes up and then your left shoulder blade starts to peel away from the ground. And then your left shoulder blade comes back down and the left side of your pelvis comes back down. So the left side, left side of your pelvis comes up, left shoulder blade comes up, Left shoulder blade comes down, and left hip comes down. And can you do that a few times? And is there some way you can kind of smooth out that movement? It becomes kind of silky. 
And can you do this and keep your knees kind of in the center so that your knees aren't allowed to drift left and right? Maybe just, uh, they can drift left and right just enough as, as much as a hair, the slightest, slightest bit. Yeah, nice. And does your head start to roll? Does your head start to roll in some way as a response to your left hip coming up, your left shoulder blade coming up, left shoulder blade coming down, your left hip coming down? Good. And then let it go. Slide your hands down. Take a rest for just a second. And then slide your left foot into standing, right foot into standing, your hands over your body to the wall. And keeping your head on the ground, can you begin to roll your head uh, to the left so your nose points to the left? As far as is easy, or even just a hint in that direction. And then begin to press through your left foot like before. So the left side of your pelvis comes up and then your right side of your pelvis comes up. And as your head start to roll to the center, like your nose points to the ceiling, then your left shoulder blade comes down, your left hip comes down and your head rolls back to point to the left. And do that a few times. So you start with your head to the left, left side of your pelvis comes up, left shoulder blade comes up, your head rolls to the middle to point to the ceiling. And then your left shoulder blade comes down, your left hip comes down, your head rolls back to point to the left. And is there some way that you can do that again with your knees being still in the center, still left and right? They have to move in a different way then, don't they? Your knees do. Good. Very nice. And then let it go. And Keep your feet in standing, but slide your hands down and begin to roll yourself slowly and easily to the left so that you're off the roller, so that maybe you can reach a hand back there and brush the roller out of the way so it's not under you at all. And it's just you and the floor. Make sure the roller is not even touching you so that you can really just begin to focus on sensing yourself here. And how do you meet the floor now? A little different, isn't it? Good. And when you're ready, if you have your legs long, slide one foot into standing, the other foot into standing. And all of us slowly roll to a side, and bring yourself up to seated so that we can place the roller down the other side of our mat, down the left side of our mat, of your mat. So that now the, it'll be parallel to your spine down the left side, down the left side. So the space between your left shoulder blade and your spine is where that roller will go. And again, your head, just like on the right side, your head will be on the floor. If it feels like your head's really laid back, you could put something underneath your head that's not the roller, right? Like a, a folded up t-shirt or a dish towel or something like that. So now the roller is down the left side of your body, parallel to your spine, the inside of your left shoulder blade, that, kind of that where that left dimple would be of your left backside, your feet in standing. And just take a moment to notice how you're meeting the floor now. What's it like to breathe here? And do make sure that your head's pretty close to the wall again to just slide a hand up to make sure that you're close enough that just a hand could slide between your head and the wall. Good. And then making sure that both feet are on the floor, that one foot's not on a roller. If it's on the roller, just brush it out of the way. Good. And then begin to slide your hands over your body to the wall. And 
and begin to press through your right foot. So now the right side of your pelvis comes up to be equal with your left on the roller, and then you let it go. You can do that a number of times. Press through your right foot, the right side of your pelvis comes up to be level with your left side that stays on the roller, and then you let your right side unwind back down, and you do it again. You pause between each of these little explorations. Of course, you always take rests when you need to, long before I invite it. And can you do this in some way that your knees, again, stay kind of still, kind of in the middle? They're not going to be still but they don't wander left and right. So that when you press through your right foot, your right knee kind of travels in a sense toward that right foot that's on the floor, doesn't it? That's what's helping to get that pelvis off the floor, the right side of your pelvis. Good. Very nice. And then begin to let it go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Slide your hands down. Maybe keep your feet in standing. But And after a cleansing breath or two, begin to slide your hands back over your body to the wall, your feet still in standing. And is there some way, again, to free up your right shoulder blade from the floor? It's a tiny movement. It's a tiny movement and your head's allowed to roll, right? Maybe that makes it easier. Or maybe you just have the idea, like, I'm just going to imagine this right shoulder blade being free from the floor, or not as weighted on the floor. Beautiful. So just a little taste of that, and then begin to let it go. What we need are just little rem reminders, as Cynthia reminded us last week, right? At the pop-up last week. Just little, little hints of these things, little tastes. Little reminders for our nervous system to go, oh, yeah, well, that's possible. I forgot that that's possible. And then begin to slide your hands over your body, your feet still in standing. So your hands are on the wall once again. And can you begin to press through your right foot so the right side of your pelvis comes up and your right shoulder blade peels away from the floor? And your right shoulder blade gets heavy on the floor again, your right side of your pelvis unwinds back to the floor. And you do that a number of times, right hip up, right shoulder blade up, right shoulder blade down, right hip down. And again, is there some way that your knees can be stillish, right? Left and right. They're still moving. They're moving in a direction that's not left and right. Good, and then let it go for a second. Slide your hands down. Feel a cleansing breath through yourself. And then slide, if your feet or legs are long, slide one foot into standing, the other foot into standing, your hands over your body to the wall. And this time, roll your head so your nose points to the right, points away from the roller. And you begin to press through your right foot, the right side of your pelvis comes up, your right shoulder blade comes up, your head rolls so your nose points to the ceiling, right shoulder blade comes down, right hip comes down, your nose points to roll back to the right. So again, you press through your right foot, right hip comes up, right shoulder blade comes up, your head rolls, your nose points to the ceiling, Right shoulder blade gets heavy again, right hip gets heavy again, your nose points to roll back to the right. And at first you might need to kind of encourage your head to roll, but then at some point, is it possible that your head just kind of comes along as a result of what you're doing with your right hip and your right shoulder blade? That some intelligence is happening with your feet and your hands on the wall. Beautiful. Beautiful. When you're ready, begin to let it go. Keep your feet in standing and slide your hands down. And begin to roll onto your left side slowly so you can brush the roller out from underneath you. 
I'm sorry, to the right side, roll to the right side to brush the roll, roller out from underneath you, or whatever is easiest. Sorry about that. And just take a moment with just you on the floor again. And what is it like to breathe here? Is there a, I don't know, an interesting sensation through one side of yourself, from shoulder to hip? Or maybe through your whole self? Good. So just take a moment to notice the curves of your spine behind your neck, between your shoulder blades, through your low back, down through your sacrum, through your tailbone. Maybe a cleansing breath helps you to notice them. It's beautiful curves that help us to walk, help us generate power in walking and doing everything that we do. Perhaps those curves could use some support again. So when you're ready, slide one foot into standing, the other foot into standing, and roll to a side. Bring yourself up to seated so that you can begin to place that roller down the middle again, down the middle of your mat. And this time your head will be on the roller, with your head very close to the wall like before. So that now the back of your head's on the roller. Between your shoulder blades is on the roller, down past your sacrum is on the roller. Maybe your tailbone, something of your tailbone is touching the roller, with your feet in standing. And just see what a cleansing breath feels like. And can you sense how these curves are supported here? They're even kind of lengthened a bit, aren't they? This roller is offering support in a way that begins to lengthen these curves with ease. So when you're ready, begin to slide one. If your feet should be in standing, so keep them in standing and slide your hands over your body to the wall. And remember that first move we made where our nose, our breastbone, and our pelvis all rolled, say, to the right. And our nose and breastbone and pelvis all rolled to the left. So that's one, that's one option, right? And then let that go and let your nose and your pelvis move in opposite directions. So your nose rolls, say, to the left, and your pelvis rolls to the right. Good, so that's another option. So come back through to the middle and slide your hands down just to give your arms a little rest for a second. So a third option that we were starting to hint at with what we were exploring there just a few moments ago. So begin to slide your hands over your body to the wall. And how about turning your head to the right? It stays on the roller, but your nose points to the right. And then super slowly, can you start to let your pelvis roll to the left and start to notice what happens with your head? But your knees need to stay kind of in the middle again. Your knees need to stay in the middle. And then you come back and do it a few times. So you start with your nose pointing to the right and your pelvis just starts to roll to the left. And then you just notice that it's like just that action of your pelvis starting to roll to the left starts to carry your nose back to the, to follow what your pelvis is doing. Good. Very good. And then begin to let it go and pause for a second, slide your hands down, maybe keep your feet in standing.
And then slide your hands over your body to the wall. Once again, your feet remain in standing. Begin to roll your head so your nose points to the right again. And begin to start rolling your pelvis to the left and let your head begin to follow. And just as your head, your nose starts to point to the left, roll your pelvis to the right. And then just as your pelvis gets to the right and your nose starts to catch up, then you roll your pelvis to the left. So your pelvis leads, your nose follows, and just when your nose starts to catch up, you take your pelvis in the other direction. But can you do this and keep your knees still? Something else has to happen then in the middle of yourself if you keep your knees from wandering left and right. Good. Very nice. Come back to the middle and pause for a second. Slide your hands down. Let's see if we can offer another possibility with this. Another possibility. So after a cleansing breath, begin to, with your feet in standing, slide your hands over your body to the wall. Start to roll your head on your roller so that your nose points to the right. And start to uh, very slowly roll your pelvis to the left and notice that your right hand on the wall could be helpful to begin to roll your head to the left. And then just as your nose starts to point to the left, you roll your pelvis to the right. And that left hand becomes helpful to roll your head to follow your pelvis. And if you keep your knees kind of in the stillish middle, you start to notice that your knees start to row. One knee starts to row toward the foot that's on the floor. Then the other knee starts to row toward the foot that's on the floor. Good, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very nice, friends. When you've had enough, begin to come back to the middle, slide your hands down very, very slowly, begin to roll yourself to one side and brush the roller out from underneath you so that it's just you and the floor once again, keeping your feet in standing or your legs long on the ground, your choice. Take a moment just to notice how you meet the floor. And what it's like to breathe. And when you're ready, begin to Slide your feet into standing if they're not there already. Roll yourself through to a side. And taking your time to very slowly bring yourself to stand. In your own time, in your own easy way. And take a moment just to simply stand there. Put your feet where you like them. It could be helpful if, you're, if you can put your feet on the most solid surface that's nearby that your feet are happiest upon and just simply stand for a second and notice, is there something different? Is there something different about the way that you're standing here? And when you're ready, begin to take a little walk around again. Could be helpful. You might need to leave the room you're in, but even if there's like a longer hallway, a place where you can take a few more steps in a row. And just begin to listen again, maybe to one foot, the way one foot is touching the ground as you walk. And the way the other foot is touching the ground. and how your spine is responding 
This beautiful spine that you have is responding to each foot, the power in each foot. So we have the name for this process in Bones for Life, Ruth Yalan's beautiful work. Uh, it's called Silken Scarf on a Roller. And as you're walking, can you begin to notice what is the silken scarf? It's not that roller we just used, it's silken scarf on a roller. We, you and I, are silken scarves. The power of gen of the ability to generate power in our walking through the soft, clear, intelligent whipping action of our spine, like a sock in the breeze, right? The power that can be generated there. So I'd love to hear how it went for you. I'd love for you to put it in the, in the chat, how it went for you. I see some of you already are, so how fun. And be happy uh, after that, after you put your experience in the chat, what it, what you're feeling, what you're noticing. Be happy to, to talk a little bit about Bones for Life and answer some questions or hear some of your experiences, your curiosities. Yay, cheering with many of you that are putting things in the chat here, how fun. So I'll read some of these out. So Joe Phil says, wonderful. Love to do this practice on a continuous basis. Help my constant right hip pain. Uh, right pain in hip buttocks going down through the leg. Good, I'm glad you got some relief. Barbara says, no hip pain after the exercises. Thank you. I'm glad you gave yourself a gift. That's beautiful. Stacy enjoyed it. Great. Uh, Joe Phil. Saying appreciated the process, wonderful. Uh, Zorka, I felt much more landed on my feet, beautiful. Beryl says, felt a little bit queasy, unbalanced, yeah. So you could choose to maybe sit down for just a moment, take some nice cleansing breaths, and then begin to see after a few minutes of just softly resting there, coming back to yourself, how you are. So Juliet, another friend from Bones for Life, good rebalance for a sacroiliac joint. Great, so glad you're here, Juliet. So he says, my nervous system uh, did not have an easy time with the nose going to the center. It took attention, yeah. And this is the first go for many of us, right? First time with this process. It took me many times to begin to, for everything to begin to kind of awaken. It's a first time. And you get the recordings, you can try it again here in a couple, like in a day or two, too. Karen says, my head is a bit more on top of my shoulders. Beautiful. Donna, I felt weighted, softer walking. Beautiful. Uh, feel your back body much more. Yeah, this roller informs much of our back body, doesn't it? Big shift of weight too. Judith, walking more softly and feel more integrated. Wonderful. Louise asks, do this daily. Oh, you could, you could. You know, do this when it's interesting for you. And you'll have the recording for a few days at least. And then there'll be an opportunity to join us in Bones for Life right after the summit too. So more on that in a little bit too. Sylvia says, standing, standing balance was better. Good, Muriel, brilliant. Thank you, so relaxing, she says. Roseanne, it helped release my sinuses. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's a great gift. Bodil, nice to see you here again. I was standing so easy and more on the whole foot. Cool, Linda, very relaxed, balanced. So fun. All these beautiful comments. I know some of you are saying you have to go too. So I'm glad you were able to join us for the, the process. Good, relief from right hip pain and all these beautiful things. Lovely, lovely, lovely friends. So I'd love to hear in person here if you'd like to ask a question or tell us about your experience or something that's rather curious for you about, about this process. I'd love to invite you to raise your virtual hand or maybe there's something you'd like clarified. Yeah. Well, keep reading comments until somebody raises their hand. My spine feels very supported now. Good. There's Donna. 
gave you the little, so you think you should get a little notification, unmute yourself. Let me try it again. Did it work? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, I can't remember. I think it's when we had the towel on one side of our spine and then we had to, we turned our head to the right and I think the opposite. And you said that the head should go back to the center a little bit naturally. And I was like, I don't think mine is. And then I realized that maybe because I'm holding, I guess, in there, when I think I kind of tried to let go a little bit, it did. Obviously, I think you're speaking in micro measures, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But it did. It did then have that natural little swing back. Oh, to the, but I think I lost it. You know, almost like when you're you do something and you lose it, you're like you had it for a millisecond and then yeah. you're like, oh, wait, I'm back to not getting it. But I had it. I tasted it. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. Like, be so I guess, does that mean then um, the question is that what it was was just maybe that I do have a lot of injuries. So and I did dislocate my clavicle from my sternum and I have so I might have a lot of holding there that I'm just, you know, opening up or realizing, you know, didn't realize how much I was holding maybe. Is that what that's from? If your head doesn't yeah, naturally yeah. go back? It could be. I mean, I think for every human being, as I always say, over age three, because <laughs> I have a nephew that was three, he's now five, but <laughs> gets toned from being upright in gravity, right? Okay. So these places for all of us, no matter our injuries, are excessively toned usually just from sitting up. I mean, gravity is pushing this down, right? Toning these areas. Because so this process, I thought I would have expected it maybe just to when I turned it to the right and the other to the left, I think, I think that's what it was. I thought it was maybe just gonna go on its own. So it's just a holding. Sorry, yeah, I'm trying to understand it. A, it just needs to, needs a little hint. You know, okay, the hint. Finger, as Cynthia is fond of oh, saying. Oh, got it, yes. Fond of saying. It's just like, oh yeah, that can, that can move. Right. You know, the smaller yeah. we can allow the hint to be at first, the more our nervous system goes, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's possible. And that's all we're doing with all these processes. And whether it's Bones for Life or Feldenkrais Method, is just giving ourselves little reminders, little reminders of things that are possible that maybe aren't usually in our, aren't often in our repertoire as in our adult lives. Maybe they were more in our repertoire as children, right? And we're just reminding ourselves like, oh, yeah, this, this, this can come forward for me, too. So, so glad you found a taste of it, Donna. It'd be fun to see what it's like after you do this again when you get the right, recording. Right. Yeah. Email us at uh, Future Life Now, support at Future Life Now, let us all know. Okay. Good. Thank you, Donna. I see Sherry has something. You should get a little note to unmute there, Sherry. There it goes. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hi, this, um, this is Sheree. And oh, Sheree. I Good. Thank you. Doing the one sided thing. I got some major cramps in my legs, Charlie horses. Mm -hmm. So I tried to breathe through it and stretch through it, did the left side and couldn't even do the practice anymore. So I got up and got some pickles. Good. Um, How'd that go? That went, that did it. It, it like instantly did it. But is there, um, I, and I'm a, a, a 15 year yoga teacher. So I kind of think that something must adjusted is what my thinking is adjusted um, to where then my legs started cramping. But any, have you had experiences before? I mean, they were, they were terrible pains. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry that. Yeah, oh, that's okay. No, I, I'm, I'm okay with all that. Just mm -hmm. wanting to understand possibly um, if, if you've ever had, had happened before. Sure, sure. I mean, even when we're being gentle with ourselves, right, in this, in a process like this, it's possible to experience, you know, some pain signal. It's like, oh, because that's a place that hasn't moved probably in a while, you know, and so it's, or moved in this way in a while, I should say. The place is always moving. Um, so it's just that little reminder is like, oh, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen today, but it'd be interesting to return to, you know, the process down the road, you know, in a few days to see if that is an interesting thing to explore again, see if something becomes more available. So what a gift, I think, you know, to say too, that you listen to that pain, went, nope, I'm gonna get up. At first, I'm gonna breathe, beautiful. Oh, that didn't do it. I'm gonna get up and move around. I'm even gonna get some pickles, see if that resolves it. 
you know, that's the whole idea in Bones for Life is really, you know, learning to take care of ourselves in such a way. The whole idea of Feldenkrais method is learning to really listen to oneself and take care of oneself. And it sounds like you did, you know, and just because you had that pain with that process, you know, today doesn't mean it's going to happen again the next time, but it might be like, oh, there's that thing that, let's see how it is today. You know, let me listen. Oh, it's better. It's better or oh, not better. You know, you need to find something else, something else to explore then. So yeah, the nice I will thing, go ahead, go ahead. Do this tomorrow um, because I think it did shift something. Um, okay. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm better now. It was just during that part, but I feel a lot better, a lot stronger. Um, like I can stand up straighter. Hey, cool. Yeah, thank you. Cherie, thank you. Who else has something? Who else? These are fun. Fun to have a conversation and a conversation around the world. Isn't that cool? What's possible these days? Something else. Just wait to the summit. The summit is going to be wild and fun. Friends all around the world. Debbie has something. Give you a little note to unmute there, Debbie. Should work. I'm going to try it again here. There we go. I think it should work this time. There we go. Yeah. Did that work? I can <laughs> hear you, but we can't see you, and that's fine. So thank you so much. I wanted to say that. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's the first time I've talked this morning. <laughs> I understand. I have that. the same thing happened to me. I had a muscle cramp. Mm -hmm. And years ago I learned a quick technique for that that worked within a few seconds. And you put the a uh, pad of like an index finger on your upper lip between your nose and your upper lip and press in towards your gum. Yes, oh. like that. You can press as hard as you need to. If the pain is severe, usually you press harder oh. and then the pain should resolve in just a few seconds. And I have done that many, many times over the years. And it's amazing oh, good. how that helps. I'm not sure the science behind it, but it's such a relief not to have to hop out of bed or, you know, with our exercise, not having to do our process this morning, just press there for a few seconds. It relaxed and then I could go on. Oh, good. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm so glad you found something that works for you and that we can explore that might work for us too. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, we were wild creatures, wild human creatures with so much intelligence, right? So much intelligence within us that we can begin to use to figure it out, figure out what it is and how it is we want to do what we want to do on this amazing planet and this amazing life. So just to say just a brief word. So, you know, Feldenkrais Method is this wonderful, huge body work that we're celebrating and exploring with the summit. And as maybe you saw in the email, as uh, Cynthia laid out, uh, Ruthie Alon created this Bones for Life work. It also goes by the name Movement Intelligence. Uh, it's her larger body of work. Bones for Life is a big, big chunk of the pie of her work. And she was a long time uh, student of Moshe Feldenkrais, uh, even 40 years. She started when she was uh, 24, I think it was, 23 or 24 with him, and learned so much. And then, as he always said, you know, you need to take this work and then take it into the direction that you want to go. And she was experiencing uh, the beginning of osteoporosis when she was in her mid, uh, mid 60s and even saw some images of herself with more of a rounded upper back. And she's like, I don't like that. And I don't, I'm not wanting to carry my luggage anymore. I'm real happy when other people are carrying my luggage, you know? And she started wondering, you know, what can I do to begin to help myself to continue my bones to grow? Um, so my bones, I can move in a way that my bones get the information they need, I need to begin to move well on this planet. And so she took Moshe Feldenkrais's ideas and took them into uh, a little bit more deeply, clearly into improving walking with their big focus. And there are 90 beautiful processes. Actually, if you take it with Cynthia and me and uh, soon more friends that'll be teaching with us, uh, we, 
we add, actually add a few more fun processes as well. Uh, but 90 beautiful processes geared to helping us to walk well on this planet so that our bones get the information that we need to begin to keep growing, to keep building. And it has been life-changing for so many. It's been life-changing for me, even after I made fun of my mom for doing it for 15 years. And I finally came around and went, oh, wow, got so much relief from, and I still do, from Bones for Life. So we'll have um, an immersion program that you'll get a chance to sign up for after the summit. And I think Cynthia is actually even making a presentation during the summit about Bones for Life. So uh, more goodness that you can begin to explore. So so many good things, <clears throat> excuse me, coming up here in the next few weeks and can't wait to see you um, with all of them. So I'm happy to take one more question or comment if you, if you have something you wanna say. See more people talking about their sinuses clearing, cool. Wonderful. Donna, something else you wanna say? Yeah. I was curious about the Bones for Life. I know that there, is the immersion considered class one? And there's several to take if you want, but you can get everything a lot out of, I know, immersion as well. Sure. Um, so immersion would be the base, the first one you want to have. And I was curious, um, I'm a caregiver. Um, you could do everything on Zoom, but then is there one weekend or so? I wanted to, I, you know, last year I couldn't have done it. It would have been too soon. Um, sure. And I'm hoping that this time I can. However, is it the first immersion that I would you have to go away at least one weekend or something and go to? Yeah, they're all on Zoom. So there are three immersions. So we divide up those 90 processes. So about 25 to 30 processes each immersion. And they're all on Zoom and they're all recorded. I didn't and know that. That's exciting. I, I was kind of like, bummer. I thought, you know, I still have to be able to factor in that one weekend of which is it at the very end if you did all the classes all of them in total then you would is that what i heard yeah maybe? if you want to become a if you want to become a teacher of bones for life there is an in in person portion but the immersion which is yours which anybody, is down the line because that's it, way down the line yeah yeah because you can't do like it would be like maybe one course one year another course is that how it is so we Probably. do the three immersions they are uh, five weeks each. So okay. immersion one's five weeks, immersion two is five weeks, immersion three is five weeks. Oh, There's usually okay. a week or two in between them. Um, okay. They'll be beginning in November and you'll get more information <laughs> after the summit about okay, that. Thanks. And they're fun and they're often- That's exciting. Times. I'm so happy you just lifted my soul just knowing that the first yeah. time around I didn't have to fly out to Cleveland or something. Oh, um, right. No, no. It works for me now. That's great. I'm excited. I was just, Good. I didn't think it was going to you know, happen. So I'll be done with that. I'll let you talk. I'm all excited. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. And just to add to that too, is that uh, we offer them at different times. There'll be more details about this down the road. So uh, this last one, so I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, where Cynthia is, matter of fact. Oh, Cincinnati. And, uh, and um, so that's Eastern time zone, but we've offered it in at times where people, a lot of people from Australia, Japan, New Zealand have joined us as well. And it's not like the middle of the night or some crazy time. It's just like a regular daytime thing. So more, so it's, it's a nice worldwide program in that sense. And so rich learning with each other, you know, the circle that emerges with, you know, friends from around the world and sharing these ideas and talking about them, learning from them. Um, it's just a wonderful thing. It's probably my favorite thing to do in my life. Uh, so I hope you'll, hope you'll consider joining us. Janine has something here too. So let me invite you to unmute yourself there. Yes, I, I have a quick question. Great. I, are, I have a compression fracture on my spine, uh, okay. T11. And I'm wondering if that program <clears throat> would be suitable for me. It's a great question. Um, and we actually have like the, the we would have a little bit of time too to have some consults before the bones for life registration happens where you can maybe tell us a little bit more uh, about how things are going for you and we can give you a better idea um, but i would probably want to have more conversation with you about that before saying um yes or no for sure okay thank you yeah great question thanks janine and i see lucy has something Go, Lucy, you should get a little note there. There we go. Great. Um, could you um, post a link for how we access information about the Bones for Life immersion? Where do we find that? 
It'll be announced after the summit, uh, but you'll be able to see a little bit uh, on futurelifenow.com. There's a little bit of information there that's there right now. Isn't that true, Cynthia? There's a little bit yeah. of about <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think Katrina is going to maybe post uh, the waitlist page so we can get you information, but we're not, we, we don't want to share information on it right now. Honestly, there's just so much going on with the summit. Let's just keep moving forward with the summit and keep you on track. Enjoy the experience today. Know that you want to come back to it afterwards and you'll get, you'll get emails after the summit is over um, with details and another opportunity to study with Brian and Andrea as well. So uh, I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> That's sweet. The enthusiasm is wonderful, of course. And you're going to get so many experiences in the summit. You might find, oh, no, now I think I want to try this thing. And then I want to know. So you'll have to try to narrow down, you know, in your uh, in, in it. So just kind of record for yourself. Hey, what has this meant to you? And Brian, uh, somebody has asked about Parkinson's. Would it be helpful for someone with Parkinson's DD? Is that in the, in the chat there? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just pull the pub couple from the chat for you. So DD said, would it be helpful for, for someone with Parkinson's? My thought on that? Yeah, I, I'm I'd say, yeah. over to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd say for, I'd say for sure. You know, with all of these things, as long as we're really tuned into listening to how how I feel in any process is the key thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether it's Feldenkrais, the beautiful experiences we're going to have with the summit, uh, or Bones for Life, the name of the game is really listening to how does this feel for me? How does this feel for me? And if it feels good to continue with the invitations that are being offered, and if not, doing what many people just shared today too, the wisdom of, look, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do any more of this for now. Maybe there's something else for me in the next process, in the next lesson. Yeah, because the next question is about hypermobility. And so it's a great contrast with Parkinson's, which tends to be where people are, are losing the clarity about the parts of themselves. I'm trying to get rid of that noise for you, I'm sorry. They're starting to lose the, uh, the clarity about the parts of themselves in a, in a way in which there's more stiffening, right? There's a little bit more stiffening that goes on like in the face and in, in the gait and more shuffle and slowness. And then, so it, for that person, it can start to free that, some of that ongoing holding up and be extremely mm -hmm. helpful for gait. But it's interesting, and as a contrast then, Meryl Rubin says, I'm hypermobile, so I don't get and recognize signals easily, what tips do you have to help me recognize or bring them forward so I can, you know, recognize it, can become aware? Go ahead, Brian. And Bones for Life is great for that because it's really about building stability within our system to be able to, um, that as you say, those parts begin to know how they work together, how we work together within ourselves. And this use of the wall that we use uh, is a great, great added feature. Sometimes we have a foot on the wall, sometimes we have hands on the wall to begin to provide a little bit more stability through ourselves, through a process. You want yeah. To add yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. And I think that one of the things I, I really like uh, Bones for Life for people with hypermobility, it's mm -hmm. not that I don't like Feldenkrais for them, but, um, but I do feel it's a better match in general. And, and uh, what it does is it just clarifies and helps to bring in a little bit of cinching throughout the system instead of uh, always going into the end range of movement. Uh, Feldenkrais also teaches you not to go into the end range of movement. It does tend to be more about flexibility than stability. And for a lot of people with hypermobility, I feel like that Bones for Life work is a little more clearly about that stability piece. Uh, so I think you can really benefit a lot from it. I know we've had many people in the Bones for Life uh, immersions over the last three years that were struggled with hypermobility as one of their issues who indicate they really got a lot out of it. It's a learning process. It's a learning process, but we will gradually guide you. Now, having said that, today's lesson, if you're hypermobile, might not have been the actual best one for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might have felt like, oh, gosh, I don't know. I, my, my rib 
just doesn't stay in place already or uh, that thing with on the back of the sacrum was too much for me. So this is important to know about yourself, um, to know these things about yourself. And we would certainly try to guide you over the course of a training about an immersion in, in a way that allows you to get to know yourself better. Uh, but you also have to come with some basic information about, you know, it doesn't go well for me when I over, overdo movements in my hip or I overdo movements with my ribs, that kind of thing. Let's see, what is better for Jana? What is better for a person with fibromyalgia, ME and chronic pain? Which is better for a person with fibromyalgia, ME and chronic pain? She wants to know Feldenkrais or Bones for Life, which is better. That is super personalized with these particular things that you've just listed. I find that um, I have found over the years that one person does better with Feldenkrais and another person does better with Bones for Life. Usually after they've explored the one that seems best for them for a period of time, then they can do the other one well as, and benefit from it as well. But I think, Jana, you're going to need to kind of ask yourself, like, what are my experiences from last week with Cynthia, this week with Brian uh, in the summit and come back and revisit that at the end. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's more questions here that, that for people who didn't want to raise their hands or didn't know how. Oh, somebody asking if you can sleep on a roller. She could she sleep on that roll towel uh, uh, on her back at night? No. Mm -hmm. Brian and I are in agreement on that one. That's not a good idea. You really got to be careful about applying these things to anything permanent, like several hours. Very, very. Uh, not a great idea. Too much of a hint, right? Too much of a hint. We're just, we want to give ourselves just a little hint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see anything else here at the moment. You've got another raised hand now. Yeah, we've somebody from using a Samson. So then we'll come to Nina after that. So friend with the Samson phone. Should have gotten a note to unmute. Hello, is it me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, hello. Hi, guys. Sorry, I didn't know the, the technical stuff because I just jumped in. I call in from Amsterdam all the way. Ah, wonderful. And I just wanted to tell you and share with you, without any previous knowledge, I felt very guided to join. And it happens to be that in my spine, I have uh, two uh, severely broken fractures, C1 and C7. C7 is fixed with titanium. And then others, uh, Torical, I have one, four, five, and six fractured as well. So with any knowledge, I just followed your guidance just. And I said, like, I because I didn't have the fear, you know. Um, well, I must say, uh, bone, I am really inspired by this. And I am studying for 10 years uh, China martial arts, internal arts, uh, Dao Yin. So, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations well, uh, for this. And um, next time I find out how to do the technical thing. Good, yeah. So for, the, for the other people, I heard somebody uh, asking about some fracture or composed stuff in the torical. Well, I'm still alive. No, that's a joke. But I, I, I think you can do it if you have any <laughs> awareness of your body and, you know, regulate the breath. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How Wonderful. long ago were your fractures? Um, the in two two oh seven. Um, the, that was seven. Incident, but I had, it happened to be that I had a, a tremendous fall and in I fell on my back last December mm -hmm. and ever since I have again the same problems. It's like my my bones and my my nervous system wants to go back to that time like. That I couldn't walk, and uh, and I'm telling like no, it's you know it's not broken this time, but the nervous system has a huge time, and it's I'm actually <laughs> suffering big as well, <laughs> in a way. So yeah. I find this like a miracle uh, meeting you all guys, and you're like it's guided for definitely. So I'm I feel really inspired. Uh, 
So the accident, to answer your question, was in, in, in uh, 2007. Okay, so I just wanna, that's wonder, wonderful to hear. There's so much that you said there that's important. So first, you are healed from the fractures. What you have are all fractures. You do not have current fractures. This is an incredibly important distinction. It also sounds like your fractures may not have been caused from osteoporosis, which also would be an important distinction for people. Um, and then this other thing that you're noticing, which is big, isn't it, is that, hey, I fell and even though I didn't fracture, it's like my whole nervous system thinks I'm way back in 2007 when it did happen. And yes, you are right that if you just go at this work very gently, very slowly reestablishing to the nervous system, oh no, I'm, I'm not back there. I'm, I'm here today and I'm safe and I feel my breath and I'm listening to myself. It can begin to unravel that pattern of, of holding. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Working on it, but yeah. yeah. So it takes time, yeah. It takes time, but both of these approaches, Feldenkrais and, and other things in the summit and uh, Bones for Life can be very helpful for someone like yeah. yourself where you're at. Yeah, and for, for others out there, um, I mean, like we can try more things. Look into Dao Yin, Yang Shen Gong. It's like the, the pre Qi Gong uh, stuff. And um, that goes really a little bit deeper. And uh, yeah, of course it's... Uh, is uh, rooted into the Chinese uh, uh, medicines, of course, but the the movements because they're really slow, and you you uh, stretch the body and and incorporate that with your breath. It can be really helpful, you know. It's uh, an amazing tool amongst this what I just experienced. And thank you a lot for that. What you just uh, demonstrated. So welcome, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see Nina has something to offer. Nice to see you, Nina. Should get the message there, try again. Hi. Hi. Hi, I've missed you guys. Um, I'm a graduate uh, for the, let's see. 151 people left here. I just wanted to share. I took the one, two, and three immersions. So I guess I am a graduate. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very active in my life. Yoga, I've done Feldenkrais, uh, martial arts, I'm swimming. And right now I live in Texas. So we're very warm. We don't go out much, but we do things. I, I, I just wanted to share that this is the kindest approach to understanding what your body and mind can do on every level. Um, I wasn't sure that I would enjoy this. I, I, I'm with a study group now, and, and we continue studying all of the movements with great joy. Um, and Brian and Cynthia are the most kind, knowledgeable, loving people who will help you in every way to succeed. Um, so that's it. I, I can't say anything more. I just, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm still doing it. I'm so happy to see you. And I encourage all of you to investigate. It's a fun process getting to know yourself, your limitations, your possibilities, and you just become a better, happier person. And as Ruthie would say, you know, you can go walk, you know, and, and not have any issues, or at least you know what to do if you have issues come up. So Beautiful. that's it. Enjoy and thank you. Thank, <laughs> Pump you, <up>. Nina. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful to see you. Rich, rich experiences. Bones for Life and the Feldenkrais Method. And I see Ovidu. Yep, Hi, go. I. Hi. Hello, I have a question. Uh, uh, soon, uh, uh, one of the members said, uh, "If uh, you can uh, sit with the uh, roll, 
by all the night. And you said that uh, is not recommended. That's I right. want to know how much is the maximum you recommend, maximum time. Probably as long as we did the process today. You know, just enough to give ourselves a little hint of possibilities and then to get up and walk around and allow those possibilities to become more integrated in our lives. So, um, Cynthia, do you want to say something else about that too? Yeah, I, I agree. It's not about the roller. It's not about the roller. It's it, you know, The roller is just to remind you that the ground on which you move is not solid. And even though we have solid floors and streets and et cetera, uh, if we were we uh, we were uh, trying to live out in nature, we wouldn't have all these cushy things to lay on. So when you take this this item and you move your body around an unstable surface, which is what is life, right? Then things happen. So it's not really so much about the roller. Uh, and when I say roller, I just want to reinforce what Brian said earlier. We're talking about a small, soft towel or blanket. We are not talking about any kind of firm roller of any kind. That's not a good idea with this process. So it, I, I think that what happens when we have an experience and it just feels so great, right? It's, is it Ovidu? Is that how you say your name? Ovidu? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Now, we have an experience where we want to keep repeating it. And the thing that seems easy is like um, if there was music playing in the background, we'll say, what was that music? I want to listen to that music because we want to anchor it. And uh, or we're like, uh, hey, that roller, can I just lie on it? It must be that roller. That's a totally normal response. But uh, it's a little bit more than just grabbing that music or grabbing that uh, uh, towel roller and lying on it. It's a little bit more than that. So uh, you'll have a week to play with the lesson and uh, enjoy it. And maybe you'll get clear or you write yourself down some steps. And then once a week, maybe you'll revisit it or twice a week, maybe you'll revisit it. But you're going to learn so many things in the summit that mm -hmm. you can revisit that you might go, my gosh, that thing is fantastic too. And that thing is fantastic too. So it's the quality of exploration that happens in a somatic approach that is, is uh, the number one on the list, in my opinion. And then the number two on the list that is a little more difficult to create for yourself unless you have a lot of knowledge about how the patterns of movement work in the, in the body is that these lessons are constructed to speak deep into your system about a function and improve it. Even though it may seem like a little random, it's not random at all. The lessons are very exquisitely constructed to speak into your nervous system below your level of understanding on a cognitive level, but totally on the level of understanding at the animal level um, to go, hey, this is about walking. Hey, this is about reaching. Hey, this is about turning. Hey, this is about propulsion forward. Hey, this is about sitting down. Oh, this is about being able to um, balance on one leg a little bit more clearly. It, all the lessons have got these kinds of things built into it. Hey, this is about calming down even though I'm upset. They're, they're functional lessons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, one uh, more uh, thing. Uh, what you told us, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, what you told us uh, last week, and uh, you, Brian, what told you th uh, this week, uh, I think is very important and uh, uh, useful for me, Good. myself, for myself. And uh, I think, uh, and we will see ne next week on the summit. Yes. It's going to be fun. Yes. It's yes, a, yes. Such a pleasure to introduce people, especially when they're new to these approaches, because it can just open up such a world, just a world of possibility that you didn't know is there. And it can work so wonderful, right, with yoga or Pilates or whatever it is that you want to be doing, or golfing or 
uh, uh, running or, you know, or just you want to be able to just get up and down and out of bed and not worry about the day. It can work so beautifully with all of those things. It's very underpinning. It's going down to the, the foundations of the nervous system, the foundations of movement. Love, we love having enthusiastic people. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Avidu. You're welcome. Let me see Leela. Leela or probably Leela or Lila. I invite you to unmute yourself there. You should get a message. Maybe, maybe. I'll try I'm trying to. Oh, I'm here. Go. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, one, the, one, the, the work of uh, Ruthie is unbelievable. I'm just, uh, uh, I'm a practitioner and, you know, I have done this lesson many times, but today I'm completely agreeing with what Cynthia was just saying, because before, you know, I realized I did the lesson. Um, I had some, some pain, some cramps, and then, I mean, before, no, but I knew I did the lesson, everything went away, bye-bye. And, but in the middle of working, I am, and my most important search when I work uh, with people and with myself is strongly recovering um, a good sense of body image, self-image and body image. And all of a sudden, you know, came this aha moment today that this uh, instrument in this, this roll towel gave an outstanding um, presence of the image of the spine um, that is so difficult to get maybe just with the floor um, or even many, many other things that, you know, in the Fell and Christ method and even with Ruti. Um, but all of a sudden today, it came so clear and it's brilliant. It was a brilliant idea, a brilliant discovery of how to give this soft and hard, because it's a combination between mm -hmm. the towel and the floor, mm -hmm. to find all the small spaces, every, everything that is there. So everything connects in a smooth, I don't want to use the word energy, but it's, it's like synergetic, mm -hmm. internal touch that gave a presence just from the bottom to the top. Um, and then all of a sudden, sections of the body that are not that were not present, or that normally when we walk are not present, they come up with a tremendous quality and clarity, but it's dynamic, it's not stiff, it's there, it's like clay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was really, um, I had an aha moment today, okay? Um, yeah. To the point that all of a sudden I just stopped the lesson and I just then I resume it later, but it, it was unbelievably helpful for as a professional and as, as myself. No, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Brian. Um, you know, I cannot do the training, it's totally off my, my possibilities right now, but believe me. Um, I have enough in my plate so far right now, but um, sure. I admire what you're doing. I think um, what you have created this possibility of bringing together people from all over the world and, and in these very difficult times is unique. It, and it's, I mean, congratulations, people. You are very, very special. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for everything you're doing. We can't wait to explore more together with the summit here. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> same, same in this end. Yeah, I had been in the other ones, and I'm, I'm in this one. Um, I'm still watching some of the previous one that I was able to purchase. Yeah. Um, and thank you. I mean, it's, it is so important. It's so important for the whole community and for people to get to, uh, to, to have a, this very important tool. Um, I have been able to help at the distance uh, people, I mean, that I re-encounter, um, you know, 
I'm from Argentina and you know, some people during the pandemic that they have uh, Parkinson and I didn't know if I was going to be able to, to get them out of um, certain situations. Uh, there are people from movement that they, they deserve to, to be back. Um, and it was a, a work of support in Stalin Christ and other things that I know because I never stopped studying and learning. Um, and it was fantastic. I mean, to have these people now back, back to themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is, is, is inspiring because it's the fact that we have lear are learning now that the, Moshe had the dream of being able to reach in this way everywhere. And, and when the internet, the internet started, I guess that he had the, the, the vision, but now uh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic what can be done. It's like we have an extension of our hands, like we, you can actually be there. It's, it's a different kind of touch and we can do it. I, I just, if, if you train yourself and you're really genuine, and, and you put everything you know towards the, the, the integration with the other one that is miles and miles and miles and miles and days away, and it still is possible. I said, Such rich work, isn't it? So glad, yes. so glad to be a colleague with you. Uh, I just try to do the best I can, whatever I can, you know, I just, um, I have to, I have to say so much to learn. It's so much to learn every single minute. It's unbelievable. And this, this is the thing. This practice gives the possibility of, of learning, really learning all the time for every second in, in observations, in the steps you do, in the actions that you do every day, you, you look at them in a different way completely in a different way. And what is fantastic is not metaphysic, it's, it's concrete, it's there. And it has all the possible qualities of energy. I, well, I want to talk about qualities of movement, but I, don't want, I want to talk about the qualities of approaching the same thing, infinite ways to approach the same thing with a tremendous richness. Yes. And their creativity explodes because that's it. Yes. You know. You're giving us a little snapshots of all the goodness we're going to explore at the summit. So. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it's really this work. I mean, yes, you know, Moshe generated it and probably was something before him that put the seeds on him to, to be able to Sure. Such an extraordinary scientist and creator. Um, but the fact that he put this in our hands to make us creators, to make us yeah, to make us that important every single minute of life. So and well, that's, that's that's it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Leela. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you know, I don't know if other people have their hands up, so I, I'm, I'm going to just shut up. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thank you. And see you at the summit. I see you. Love to everybody. Okay. And Millie has something to say. Thank Good. you, Brian. Um, I am living in Israel, and my question is: It's my first summit. My question is because of the seven hour time difference. So I'm not exactly sure how it will work. Will I be able to see replays? Is it just going to be able to be just audios or will I see uh, the videos as well? Could... Cynthia can give you all the, the goodness here. Yeah, uh, you summit, the summit is a combination of some pre recorded sessions. Those are released at 3 a.m. New York time, which is a great time for you usually in Israel, but maybe not. And then anything that's like that that's pre-recorded, it's released and it's available for 48 hours. So it doesn't matter if you're still sleeping when we release it. When you wake up, it's there. If you have to go to work, when you come home, it's there. So you have 48 hours to watch any given session. Then there, 
unlike the what you and I, what we did here today uh, in the summit, anything that's live, which is usually when you're sleeping at 6 p.m., most of the things are live. Although on day one, those some of those could be at a good time for you. Um, those will be up again recorded. So if you don't get to come to the live, it'll be recorded and it takes us usually about four hours. And then we'll have the replay up and the replay will be available to you for 48 hours. So it'll really, it'll, it really, you don't have to be on a schedule. You just have to know, hey, on these days, these, these are the things that I wanna watch. And I know I have 48 hours to watch them uh, once they're released. Or you say to yourself every day, I wanna take this amount of time and devote it to the summit and I'll pick out the things that are important to me every day on that day. So it'll, it'll be fine. You won't be stuck to a schedule. Millie, you Thank just have you. to work it in within 48 hours. And will I act, will I see the, like the actual video? Oh yeah. Okay. I don't think we so have anything much. that's audio only. I can't think of anything that's audio only. No, you'll see the video if that's important to you. And if it's not important to you and you want to turn off the screen, you can watch, just listen. Yeah. I love your bright colors. Mm -hmm. Where at in Israel? Oh, okay. uh, she'll have to be. There we go. Hold on, on just a second here. We'll have to get you again. Should just tap it again, Millie. What did you ask? Where, where at in Israel? Beit Shemesh. I just, oh. I moved here one year ago from Toronto. Uh -huh. And I was doing Feldenkrais in Toronto. I don't know where, I don't know that city. I don't even know that city yet. Half an hour from Jerusalem. Okay. Oh. So I was very close. I have been. I have been several places in Israel to visit. When Ruthie was alive, I went to visit with her and trained in my senior trainer training there. So loved, loved it. I bet you're enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you, Millie. All right. I think maybe people are uh, zoomed out. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful conversation. Wonderful. And can't wait for the summit. Yeah, so I want to thank everybody. Uh, we just want to thank uh, Brian again for bringing his teachings to us today. And if you are not registered for the summit, then go ahead and register, feldenkraissummit.com. If you are confused about things, email support at futurelifenow.com and they will be happy to help you. Or you can be on feldenkraissummit.com and open a chat window and talk with someone live quite a few hours a day right now during the summit, even more so. So I, I think it'll just take you a little rhythm on day one and day two. Uh, and then after that, it will feel like, oh, I know what's going on. This is, this is a piece of cake. Okay, everybody. Thanks, Brian, so much. Thank you.